fire and fury inside the Trump White House is making waves in the United States, and it's topping all the bestseller lists. Here in Israel, there's a lot of interest in some of the comments in that book that relate directly to the Middle East. We're here to speak with a top Middle East observer, Amos Asael, to hear his take on what's written in the book. There are elements in that book that relate to Israel and the peace process, including some very curious comments attributed to Steve Bannon, in which he says that the first thing that the Trump administration will do is move the embassy to Jerusalem, and then they'll give Gaza to the Egyptians and give the West Bank to Jordan. What do you make of some of these kind of pronouncements? Do you take it seriously? Is that the Trump peace plan? I, I have no way to judge uh, whether it's Trump's plan or indeed what this very unpredictable man will do on any front, least of all, on this very um, complex Middle Eastern arena. But having said this, the, um, the abstract idea of uh, effectively, if not formally, outsourcing both Gaza and the West Bank to their pre-Israeli rulers is not far-fetched. And frankly, this is what back in the 1980s Shimon Peres, of all people, uh, contemplated. This is what he meant when he spoke of the Jordanian option. Uh, he effectively then hoped and, and worked towards um, uh, a Jordanian return of some sort to the West Bank. And King Hussein at the time was open to this idea until the eruption of the First Intifada, which made him totally and formally sever his ties with uh, the West Bank. But the idea remains intact. I don't think that today's uh, Jordanian uh, palace, um, or in other words, uh, King Hussein's son, King, Ab King Abdallah, uh, would be open to this idea. This, for him, is, is a can of worms that he wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole, in my assessment. But I might be surprised. But as a quest, from an American viewpoint, it's not far-fetched. This is as for the West Bank. As for Gaza, even more so, because it really is um, on the Egyptian uh, shoulder, and for the Egyptians, it is a potential and probably also a practical source of many problems, and it's not an illogical solution from an Egyptian viewpoint to return and rule Gaza so that it does not spew out at Egypt the kind of Islamist challenge that Egypt now faces. America, as we view from here, seems to be extremely uh, deeply polarized uh, about Donald Trump, about his mental capacity uh, to serve as president, especially um, after this book has been published. Have we seen anything, to your knowledge, in Israel that gives us cause for concern about President Trump? Well, um, we only see what everyone else is seeing. And I would say that uh, regardless of Israeli interests, in terms of Jewish values, um, what we see uh, from uh, Donald Trump's personal conduct is very disagreeable. Uh, there is a very Jewish uh, value of, uh, of not blemishing people. Begin with that. Uh, he does not uh, uh, live one day without saying very bad things about very good people, often uh, very unfoundedly, never mind tactlessly. Uh, this is a problem for a Jew completely regardless of national interests. And uh, the same goes for his uh, uh, very um, uh, dismissive uh, attitude towards truth itself. Um, in Judaism, we care about truth, and we uh, don't appreciate people who bandy lies, even if they otherwise are favorable to us. There is a moral problem here from a Jewish viewpoint, and I think that maybe it cannot be mixed into the Israeli uh, strategic diplomatic uh, uh, concerns. The world does not run this way. But you're asking me as an individual. I'm not a member of the government. And I have to therefore reply to such a question, not only as an Israeli, but also as a Jew. And that response is unfavorable. Amot Sassel, thanks so much for being with us at Win News. Thank you, Steve.